Good morning, everybody. Hola. Benvenido a Marida. Is everybody okay? Can everybody hear me okay? Good. Uh, no voy a hablar más español malo. I'll speak no more bad Spanish, so I'll just speak bad English from now on. Um, many thanks for coming to, v, uh, to see our talk today. My name is Joe Murison. I'm the Managing Director of Catalyst IT Europe, part of the Catalyst Group. Um, you will probably be able to see the Catalyst Group in the crowd and in the rooms. We are all wearing um, bright red. Um, and I'm joined today by one of our um, fabulous and, and really um, uh, the proudest partnerships um, with Mr. Alistair Spark. No, that one is not on. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Uh, yes, I'm Alistair Spark from UCL, University College London. And Jason is also part of the talk, but sitting down. <laughs> Good. Okay, let's dive right in. So we wanted to talk to you today about the importance of open source um, and in the importance of forming partnerships or fostering partnerships um, that both realize the benefits of open source, but also um, follow the ideals of open source by ensuring that you give back by default or that you are always in intending or interested to give back and share back. Uh, it's a mission that we have built our business on for 20 years, uh, and we were credited with a wonderful 20-year award yesterday from Moodle for that 20-year contribution to the project. We're very proud of that, and we've never found a partner more suited to that vision with us as in partnership than, than UCL, um, and particularly the team and the projects that Alistair has built at UCL um, that are designed from the ground up to ensure that we're giving back to the open source project that is Moodle for the benefit of everybody here and everybody globally. So a quick run through of who we are. I mentioned just a moment ago that we are a 20 year Moodle partner. We were founded 25 years ago on a small um, uh, country, New Zealand, um, small but mighty. Uh, and in those 20 years or 25 years, we've grown to be a global um, open source specialized services provider with uh, operations all around the world, Canada, UK, Australia, Ireland. Um, we have about 200 staff. We're very specialized in big Moodle, higher education focused Moodle, Moodle for universities, we often call it, uh, or Moodle for government. Mission critical Moodle is another thing that I like to often state, is that we're highly specialized in ensuring that your Moodle will not fail and will deliver on its goals or its outcomes. Um, and then, Alistair? Uh, yeah, so UCL, <coughs> we are the largest on-campus university using Moodle in, in the United Kingdom. Um, we have 50,000 plus students, uh, 16,000 plus staff, enormous uh, load on the system that's very um, time sensitive with lectures starting on the hour, um, so very, very big peaks and, peaks and troughs, um, which is slightly different to uh, raw numbers, might, might be you know, spread out a, a lot more throughout the day. We have a lot more in-person uses of, of Moodle, like for exams and all of that always starts on the hour and, and really stresses the system out. Um, so yeah, that's UCL. Good. So we joined a formed a partnership around four years ago. Um, there was a, a global event that happened. Um, I don't like to mention it anymore, but we all remember it. And um, we had been working with UCL in a sort of consultancy um, and periodic partnership um, manner for many years. UCL had a big Moodle. Uh, we had uh, expertise and services that could help. Um, but when that event arose, uh, or leading up to the arising of that event, there was a clear need or a clear issue um, presented to us uh, from the team at UCL. And that is that when Moodle uh, is running at scale, very, very large Moodles, uh, as we mentioned, million page loads a day quite frequently, huge concurrency spikes on the hour, every hour when people log in, big exam sessions, mission-critical elements of your platform delivery that must not fail 
Unfortunately, it was failing, it was falling over. So we presented with a requirement to ensure a resilient and performant Moodle platform, moved to the cloud. Um, these are the requirements that were presented to us. There needed to be a depth and wealth of Moodle expertise available um, in, in the partnership that UCL was seeking. And a way to mitigate or avoid a common problem, particularly in the higher ed, where you see expertise come and go quite frequently, a churn of your expertise, your strongest and finest sysadmins, engineers, developers, um, will move around in the sector. Uh, and there was a challenge around maintaining or mitigating that risk. Uh, and then ensuring that responses to those requirements uh, were timely and robust, um, so a rock solid um, service delivery. Uh, that was what was presented to us from UCL. Yeah, so as Joe alluded to, I think one of the big challenges before we formed this partnership was Catalyst. We were hosting on premise ourselves as an organization. We weren't doing very well with that. Uh, we had outages on a monthly basis or so from various reasons, um, and that needed to end. Uh, we had also spent a decade of uh, growing Moodle uh, to handle the gross in student numbers that um, UCL had, and also the gross in usage. So mostly spent our time in perpetual expansion of infrastructure projects uh, with no time to improve the functionality of Moodle itself for the institution. Um, and so it was very clear that we needed to move to the cloud and move to that infinite scaling model and so that we are done and once and for all with that infrastructure side of things. So um, obviously I think everyone knows 2020, uh, big changes happened big need for scale, and um, that decision of us moving to cloud was left to our new CIO, um, Chief Information Officer, to make as a decision on his first day on the job, uh, which he did uh, give us a green light, and also then rolled out Agile and Scale Agile framework within UCL um, to, to support all of that as a UCL strategy. Um, so we're then able to finally create that space for delivering, delivering user value and delivering all the features, the plugins, the LTIs that all of the institution had been asking for. And then we did have our first outage in the cloud, um, and this time it wasn't infrastructure. It was the actual Moodle code that was failing in terms of performance for us as a big institution. And so that started us start thinking about how we um, focus on performance and contributing into core Moodle. But that's for the next slide, so I'll pass back to Joe. So just to set the scene here, the, the way that we form a partnership, I think, is um, quite important in the way we perceive this. There's lots of talk commonly about Moodle being free, um, and it is, but it still needs a well-managed um, service wrapper or, or a good governance structure around it. We describe that like this. So you get the bits in the middle for free or for some engagement on your part, um, but we, as a uh, Moodle partner, premium certified services partner, wrap our service wrapper around the outside. So when UCL needed good infrastructure and hosting, we had that available. But at the same time, if UCL required some development services or some other services that exist, those are what we uh, provide to those uh, Moodle platforms that we love and care for. Um, and we also bring a governance structure that tries to ensure that what you're building and what you're developing and what you're engaging with is, um, matches what we call our 5S test. If I just skip through this, because you can come and talk to us about this on the stand, security and scalability are really, really foundational to this. You want a secure platform, it looks after critical data. You want to be able to scale it up without it causing damage to your platform and performance. And then this, the three along the top are questions you should ask yourself before you invest heavily in building new functionality and new features. And we ensure we ask that question, or we promote those, thinking, those methods of thinking in our partnerships. Um, UCL think similarly. They are always thinking about sustainability and the best way to ensure that their investment um, uh, you know, continues to be of value into the future. And this is some of the work they've done. So following that, um, that first outage, we then decided to establish a stream of work around site reliability engineering, which is essentially looking at how Moodle is doing when it's up and where it's got bottlenecks in terms of performance and how do we start addressing those and, and actually developing functionality to address that in, in Moodle. 
Um, and one of the first things that was a blocker to this was that <coughs> um, in our conversations with a lot of Moodle partners in the UK, no one was really willing to work on core Moodle because of the funding model around that being not really being the model in how fixed quote development then gets submitted, then you might have to rework it and spend three times the amount of work uh, because of feedback in integration review. Um, so we agreed a model that would work for both sides and allowed us to proceed. Um, and through that, we had identified uh, a number of trackers um, that were um, of concern for that performance bottleneck around course mod info. Uh, and I won't go into it because it's very technical and it's probably flies over most people's heads. Uh, it's a very nerdy subject, um, but we just tried to show up. Um, there was already one tracker worked on by HQ, one tracker being uh, worked on by the Open University, and then there was two trackers that we thought we could come in and help out, so Catalyst EU worked on uh, with our funding. Next one. Um, so that was uh, the first phase of core development. Uh, another um, strand of work that was really important is um, us starting a very big project. And then that first big project, we didn't have any developers in-house. We tried to recruit some. Um, we hadn't. It failed. Um, so we reached out to Catalyst and said, can you help us out? And they very kindly provided a developer to come work in our team for a three-month period and actually work on this project side by side with our tech leads, our, develop our, our learning technologists, and actually implement this. And that worked really well. We then had our own developers recruited a few months later, um, and we had another renewal, and a second developer from Catalyst came and joined us for another three months period. And that really got us on track of starting, uh, moving into just development, improving Moodle for our institution, um, and start showing to the uh, institution that we can deliver uh, what they need. Uh, next one. Um, and the model that we were generally trying to reach for is I think we've all heard of the Open University and Tim Hunt and Sam Marshall, all of the big names that are from the Open University who've been very active contributors. And that is the role model that we were trying to aspire to um, in being an active member of the Moodle community in the plugin space, but also in the core uh, contribution space. Um, so all of our... Um, so we have, we've got a number of improvements, feature, new features and bug fixes to core um, by both Catalyst and some of these UCL developers. And we've built that capability of having everyone in both of those teams being able to have, being established as Moodle core developers in the tracker, being able to peer review each other's work and being able to start to um, remove as many blockers to being able to contribute in the core. Um, and that just makes that contribution so much easier once you've got someone else that you are working with who can do that peer review for you. Um, so a few highlights of things that we worked on. In Moodle 4.2, there was the private Moodle groups, which allowed students who had, for example, uh, a need for reasonable adjustments for potentially disability reasons to be able to have those extensions and those groups in Moodle be created without revealing to the rest of the students in that course that they have these um, sensitive information about them. Um, likewise, in 4.3, we contributed the ability to restrict an LTI to specific category, and that was because we, being a very big organization, had different departments and faculties who had licensing for an LTI tool for their department and faculty, not for the whole institution, and that enabled that piece of work. Um, and then we also had a number of SRE-related uh, work around um, web uh, read-only sessions, uh, the quiz statistics, of course, regrading that was struggling to compute uh, at scale uh, for an institution our size, uh, improvements to how we can overview, have an oversight of the ad hoc tasks in, uh, in Moodle. Um, and yeah, I think Joey added this line about Catalyst having completed around 300 trackers in the last five years and 60 of which were uh, supported by UCL. Yeah, and, and this is what it's all about. So I just want to do a little exercise quickly. How many people here have an account in the Moodle community or the Moodle tracker? Can I see some hands? 
Wouldn't it be good if that was more hands by the end of today? Yeah? How many people here have fixed or had a Moodle tracker accepted or worked on a Moodle tracker or tested one? Good. That's pretty good. Yeah, cool. Uh, but that's what this is all about. That's how this works. That's what this community-based project is built upon, right? And that's what we're most proud of, and it's what we would like to help and see more engagement in as a result of um, uh, the sort of expertise and, the, and the, the sort of leading light position that we take on that, but that Moodle has succeeded from. Um, all of these things here that UCL funded and Catalyst built, you've got all of them, and you got them for free, but they weren't free. People had to do that work, and that's something that really does often get overlooked in this, um, in some uh, parts of this community in this project, and we'd like to make sure that that's really clear and that we're all pulling in the same direction, which we of course are. So here's a quick stats slide again. This is just the Moodle 4.5. Alistair? Yeah, so I, I, I was looking at some stats about Moodle 4.5. These are not absolutely uh, correct, I just tried to do some ballpark figures of where most of the trackers that were in the 4.5 integration cycle came from. And the, the number that really surprised me was just how much uh, HQ uh, heavy the core development really is. Um, and obviously we've got uh, Catalyst Global, technically comes in a second, but uh, Open University, um, the University of Vienna, uh, and Bern, and then the different Catalyst and, and a number of very smaller contributors, but mostly European-centered, UK and uh, Germany and, and, and Austria-based uh, uh, universities and partners. Um, and from the EU, obviously, eight of the integrated ones were from UCL funding, three from the Quiz Consortium. We have another seven that are ready to go for 5.0 cycle. Um, and one of the ones, uh, again, coming from the SRE angle, uh, one of the big pieces of work we, we have is around pre-computing quiz attempts so that when we have these very big exams taking place in Moodle and there's this enormous spike in infrastructure load, that spike will um, kind of not be there, which will make the ability to have exams a lot more reliable, a lot smoother. The infrastructure can still scale up if it needs to, but it just isn't going to be the hammering that it is now. Uh, and that just benefits everyone in being able to, you know, say touch wood, Moodle is going to be okay for this big exam. Doesn't matter if you've got 5,000 students, they're all taking it at the same time. Moodle can handle it. Is anyone here representing one of these organizations? Good. When hopefully we get a round of applause at the end, some of it's for you as well, right? Because that's what this is for. So uh, thank you for your contribution to the project. Great stuff. Ah. So, yeah, um, so the, all of this work um, has created a track record for our internal stakeholders of what we have been able to deliver um, and uh, rely, deliver it reliably, which has propelled us and uh, enabled us to have um, better conversations. So one of the projects that we developed internally was around the ability to transfer marks for Moodle into our student record system. And that kick-started a number of conversations around assessment in Moodle. Uh, and that has, um, uh, and also uh, having contributed to the Chris Consortium, all of those things sort of came together in improving our conversation around what should Moodle ass assessment be able to do and align ourselves with what the, what the institution needs strategically, and which also led to slightly more funding, uh, which moving on to. Next slide, yeah, okay. Um, and so, but that strategic funding and a strategic alignment is really important um, in the long run. Um, again, all of this work has meant that as we're developing more, contributing more, we need to release more often. And as a partnership with Catalyst, um, we still own our code base um, and we hand it over to be deployed. Um, this is also a good example of how the partnership works. It's sort of me going, hey, um, can we work on this? Can we just make it better? And um, we did our thing in our, our side of the process. Catalyst did their bit of the process. And um, we kind of got the entire process of handing a release over down from something like three days to like two hours of us just pressing a button, all of the automation doing its job. And, um, 
Uh, and, and yeah, in just being more reliable. That bit's why our partnership's really good, because Alistair's always trying to make things better. It's really, really positive. I, I'm oh, annoying, aren't I? Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, four years on, um, we went from a un, relatively unreliable Moodle um, to a rock-solid Moodle and um, really focused, and now have moved, been continuously improved, delivering high user value through our developments and being heavily active in the contribution to core Moodle, uh, which is also meaning that as we're adding these features to the latest version of Moodle, we're upgrading a lot faster to the higher version of Moodle, which just generally means Moodle gets more battle-tested in a very big institution earlier on, because we kind of upgrade three months after a major versions come out, so generally benefiting everyone. Uh, which is, yeah, win for UCL, win for Catalyst, win for Moodle. Okay, so, a couple of quick points, and then this is the last slide. So the one thing I wanted to ask was, imagine if everybody just fixed one bug each release, every Moodle partner fixed one bug. That would be a bigger number on that list we showed earlier. Or imagine if we all just listened to something that somebody wanted, and then, we see this a lot, do we stand up and we sort of moan and say, I wish it did this. But the immediate response, sometimes almost I feel like I'm saying it facetiously, but I'm not, is, so have you written that up? Have you put it in a tracker? Have you got some votes for it? Have you contributed the idea to the community for um, open source engagement? And potentially, development by one of us, by yourselves, or even by Moodle HQ, they think it's a good idea. This is what it's all about. So it'd be great if by the end of this conference there was more engagement, and we're happy to tell you or help you on that journey if you wish. Now, do we have two, one, two minutes? Good, thank you. So, um, hello, I'm Joey, Alistair, and time for questions. Two minutes, I think. You never know if that's good. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Just keep talking, then I switch on. Yeah, keep talking. Test, test, test. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> hey. Yeah, this is working. Okay, thank you. My name is Mutlogo Tobeyan. I'm from University of South Africa. We are in the process of wanting to move our model instance from another uh, cloud provider to AWS, right? I wanted to check through your transition. I understand now you get the scalability, reliability, and what you are looking for. But from the cost perspective, how did you find it when you are now on AWS? That's my first question. My second question is around maybe in terms of Catalyx itself, do you, when you, do we subscribe, or if now during the implementation, are you going to use our own tenant as a customer, or how does it work, the whole uh, uh, relationship between Catalyst and whoever is a, is a client? I guess we're a bit of a okay, thanks. custom setup where we have a direct relationship with AWS and we pay our AWS bill, Catalyst helps, ma manages everything in terms of the infrastructure, and as I said, we give our code to them and they run it. Um, so for us, that move to cloud just means that we don't have to worry about infrastructure anymore. Someone else does, and instead of 90% of our time being just how do we keep Moodle on, 99% of our time is what is the features that the community at our institution want we don't have to worry about the infrastructure anymore, it's rock solid. So that is the main shift. We didn't get rid of the infrastructure people that we had, we just focused on improving our testing environments, our automation processes, just allowing ourselves to create that space to be able to, to de deliver on development um, and have unlimited test environments and things like that. So, you know, we're all still around, we just focus on different kind of work, just better work for the institution. So the one thing I'd say is it was a really big project. It went really smoothly. Um, we're still all friends. Um, some of the team who did that are actually at this stand. They're in red. Come and talk to them. Um, it was a big Moodle, but it went very well in the project sense. So, yeah, really good. We formed a great partnership.
Okay, thank you very much.